panel I'm really excited to hear about. Thanks. How's everyone doing? So, funny story to kick it off. Um, it was really an honor to meet Mark here today. And uh, the that uh, relationship began when we got hit up at Edge of NFT by the Lobster and Beer podcast. You know, it's, it's fun to do collabs as a podcast. But when someone says, do you want to do a podcast where we send you lobster and beer and then we talk? That That's like, yes. So... Any advice out there for new podcasters, that's a great way to get a yes. Um, but I'm Josh Krieger. I'm one of the three co-hosts of Edge of NFT. We cover the leaders in the space and what's happening with the doers and creators. And we also host NFT LA, um, which was one of the largest uh, Web3 events on the West Coast. Um, really honored to be here today and have a really exciting conversation around style and how style is really quite different when it comes to NFTs than what you might think if you're styling your house or styling your car. There's both the technology side of it and then there's the design of it. And I have a panel coming up to the stage that really covers that whole uh, circle of, of, of style as, as it is. And um, let's bring these guys up. Let's bring up Mark and Amanda and uh, the rest of the crew, Jared and Alex. Come on up. So I'm going to get one more. Actually, you guys all sit. I'll stand. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to stand. I, I want to stand. Um, so, so yeah. Um, each of you have done a lot of things in the space, and you're thinking about style and design and utility in your projects, and in some cases working with other creators as well. So I'd love it if you guys could each introduce yourself and what the world of styling means in your world. Uh, let's start with Mark. Why don't we pass around mine for now? So my name is uh, Mark Murrow. I am the founder of Get Main Lobster, which was founded in 2009. And then most recently, we founded Hattie's Bay Club, uh, which is a 7,777 NFT project on the Binance chain. Hi, my name is Amanda Terry. I am co-founder and chief operating officer of a company called Metagood. Um, our mission is to empower communities to be catalysts for positive collective action. We launched an NFT collection last September called On Chain Monkey, which was, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I see some holders in the audience, um, which was the first profile pick collection all on chain in a single transaction. So when we talk about styling, those were all coded into existence. But now we're going to be doing a, karma, uh, a public mint on June 29th of our Karma collection, and I'll talk more about that, but that has all been worked on by a Hollywood animation team since October, and the art is sick. So I will talk more about that. Uh, my name is Alex Alpert. I'm the director of NFT Creative at One Of. I'm kind of the resident, like, artsy-fartsy guy. I got into the space as an artist. I sold a lot of my art in the early NFT clubhouse days and then uh, got brought onto their team to kind of be like the liaison between the musicians and brands that one of works with and the visual artists in the NFT space. So that's kind of my specialty. Hey, my name is Jared Christofferson. I'm one of the co-founders of one of. Uh, my look of style is probably a little different than uh, this guy who is actually super talented. Uh, my background is all performance marketing, which is like data-driven user acquisition and uh, blockchain rewards programs, which I've been working on for three or four years before one of. Uh, personally, I, I rely on folks like this for style. I mean, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've been sent home from events by my co-founder where he's like, Jared, go home. You got to change. This is ridiculous. Uh, so it's different take on things here. <laughs> right on. You know, I, I think the thing about style that's so interesting to me is when it's there, it's there. And when it's not, it's not from a consumer perspective. And when you have that connection, that affinity to the NFT that you buy after the reveal, it's like magic, right? And so we want to sort of unpack how do we get to that magical experience, both from a technological perspective and a design perspective. Um, and I'd love to start with uh, Amanda and Mark. You guys have pretty distinctive collections. We'll talk to the one of guys after because they work with so many different artists. But um, Amanda, monkeys. Why monkeys? Uh, so it's a funny story, actually. We were originally uh, working on a different collection, which were bears. And um, 
we were almost ready to go. We were going to set up our Twitter, our Discord, and start marking it. And then Danny, my co-founder, who uh, has a PhD in computer science from Stanford, wicked smart, founded the Stanford Bitcoin Meetup back in 2013, was just on the side, like kind of for fun, coding to see as a technical challenge, could he create a 10,000 profile pic collection? So all of the images, all of the metadata on SVG in and then launch it in a single Ethereum transaction, which is extremely secure, extremely efficient from an energy perspective. And he just launched it. So we didn't do a lot of pre-marketing or anything. He literally sent like a WhatsApp to me and Bill and said, hey, check this out. And they, uh, Roam from Dapper Labs was one of the first people to retweet it. We were minted, all gone in four hours. And ever since then, we've been steadily increasing in value to where we're actually one of the most profitable NFT collections of all collections based on uh, trades in profit. I just so. want to... I want to recap that is, you know, let let serendipity happen a little bit, right? Don't overthink it. I think that um, you could go through a, a normal branding process like brands do and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in months and come up with a style. But sometimes things just happen organically. Um, so, uh, you know, in your case, Mark, um, obviously crustaceans are going to have something to do with whatever you're doing in the space, right? But let's break it down from an aesthetic perspective, from a visual perspective. What were some of your initial thinking on how to create a collection that had some uniqueness to it, some je ne sais quoi? Yes, so we got lucky. Um, I discovered and saved a super rare lobster uh, named Hattie, and um, she's a blue and pink one in 100 million uh, lobster. And so I had a really cool basis to work from. So then we thought about assets and I wanted at least eight assets. And then what could make Hattie really look interesting? So I thought about mohawks and Gucci shirts and things like that. The Gucci shirt I didn't use because I didn't want Gucci coming after me. But um, I wanted to personify her and what inspired me about Hattie was the fact that she was rare, bold, and beautiful. Like, I got to see her in person, not a lot of people did. And you can, if you Google search Hattie, the rare cotton candy lobster, uh, you'll see how beautiful she is. And so I wanted to have that come out in the distinction of the very exclusive art. Very cool. Now, one of the guys, how many collections have you guys done at this point? How many drops? Like, dozens? Over? Uh, like a, I'd say like 20 at least. Like 20. Yeah, yeah. At least so, like one a week. So probably. there's yeah. got to be some lessons learned there and some distinctions around how you integrate um, both the musicians and other types of artists you're featuring, plus the artists themselves, um, and then your brand into that aesthetic. And I know, um, Alex, you think about that a lot. And then, Jared, you're thinking about things from a utility strategy perspective. So let's start with like the integration point, because that's a lot of... of of data points to integrate and to work with. Do you have a standard methodology or process for how you look at the visual side of your drops? Uh, I wish I had like an intelligent standardized approach, but I really don't. I really kind of approach each drop like as an artist. Um, I really, for us, we're very artist first. So whatever musician we're making a drop for, whatever brand, like that aesthetic is the priority. Um, so I'm definitely kind of like looking at it if Doja Cat was doing a project, What? how would she do it? How would her team do it? What is her brand? And that's the highest thing for me. Um, after that is whatever visual artist from the NFT space I bring in. And one of my main um, focuses is like finding an NFT artist who has like a built-in collector base and is like already ingratiated into the NFT space that vibes with the musician and their aesthetic. So I'm looking at each of the musicians and brands and being like, oh, you know, like one of my favorite projects we did was um, the Whitney Houston drop we did. And, uh, you know, it was an unrecorded Whitney Houston song. She was 17 years old, um, girl living in New Jersey. And I happened to be friendly with uh, Diana Sinclair, who's an NFT artist, 17 year old girl living in New Jersey and like little serendipitous things like that. Um, the narrative worked really nicely and Pat Houston um, just like really got along with Diana and it turned into this like collaborative thing. And that's really what I'm looking for. And what I love about NFTs is how it's a collaborative thing between visual artists, musicians, brands. And then after all that, um, maybe to the chagrin of some 
people one of like that's when one of aesthetic comes because i again like i i think we would all agree that like the artist in their um project is the most important part right on and by the way jared you're representing one of but you also get your on-chain monkeys hat on and i think that's the beauty of it is like there's an energy here that we're talking about that somehow happens when you play well with others and you start to collaborate um i'm, I'm curious though what one of thinks of when it comes to the broader utility and inter integrating utility and style together and how you guys look at your role in the ecosystem in terms of the, the technology and the utility side of the equation. Yeah, I mean, NFTs are supposed to be fun, right? It's it's like a surprise and delight experience beyond just the, the, the style of the NFT. And I think part of that, part of the magic there is is what happens with the community. So, we're, I mean, we're talking about on-chain monkeys here, huge fan. Uh, I mean, it's really interesting, and I, I think this is kind of where the future is, is headed with all these collections. Uh, like, you guys have a great community, too, and it's, I, I think that's representative of, of the future of this and, and where we're headed. And the question is, like, how do you, how do you really engage your community? And I, I think the way that you do that is that surprise and delight kind of the, the factor there. Uh, and the way that that happens, I, I think, is utility of, of NFTs. So we're talking about the future of rewards, the future of uh, what this means, where it's like a two-way street between brands and their community, uh, where by providing more uh, utility, more rewards to your uh, your backers, you also benefit yourselves as, as a brand. Uh, and I think that's a really important distinction. Like right now we're launching uh, something called OnePass, uh, which I think we just announced uh, and doesn't, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's really starting to explore what it means uh, to hold an NFT with with utility, and I, I think we've put out uh, something that has more rewards than anything else I can name out there. There's IRL benefits. We've got 1.6 million uh, bars, restaurants, hotels, hospitality venues. You get like free champagne and discount hotels. Uh, there's also early access to drops, like surprise and delight moments. Uh, meet the founders, go to dinner, uh, free NFTs. So. We're just trying to stack the cards and, and see like how much we can do from a utility perspective to really engage people and, and make that combine that with cool art and cool community and, and see where the future leads us. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats on that. I've been checking out the emails and, and trying to dig in uh, more to what that's all about. Sounds really exciting. So, you know, we've got the utility side, we've got the style side, and then you guys all talked about community. And I think in a, in a lot of ways, the community is a new type of stakeholder in the art itself. And Amanda, you were sharing a little with me with how you guys are engaging some of your community members in the art. It made me reflect on um, someone I know in LA, or he's tra a world traveler now, uh, Cheetah Cowboy. And he's got this really cool aesthetic. Sometimes his hair even looks like a cheetah. And he's been integrated in a lot of projects by people that like want him part of the community. So how have you tried to integrate um, some of your important stakeholders in your future drops? So uh, just a couple things on that Karma collection. Actually, the whole reason that got started is one of our on-chain monkey holders is an artist designer. And he did a monkey derivative that he tweeted on his personal Twitter. And so many on-chain monkeys follow each other. He got so many likes that we reached out to this guy and we're like, hey, do you want to work with us on our next collection? Because your art is incredible. And he said, yes. So he came on board in October. Then he hired his boss. Then he hired two other Hollywood animators, basically the team behind Rio, Ice Age, Ferdinand. They won the Annie Award, which was one of the top animation awards. So in terms of community engagement, it truly came organically from our community, this new Karma collection. Um, and then I guess... And then you haven't yeah. really fussed with them too much. You're like, let the artists do the art right? Like, yeah, like we, just let them go. We do. I mean, we have an amazing woman that runs our art team and the four artists and it's very secretive. Like I don't, I have not even seen some of our K2, K3s, which are coming um, in the next drop. I've seen the K1s. They, they like to kind of surprise and delight. They even showed me everyone, the K3s. They're looking pretty good. Everyone on the team. So uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty incredible from that perspective. And then uh, the other part of the question was integrating the community into the art and, and some of the fun stuff that you're doing there. Yeah, so we've been fortunate to have a really great group of angel investors from you know, the founders of Dapper Labs, Litecoin, um, YGG, Axie Infinity, Sandbox. 
Uh, Holly Branson, who's uh, you know one of the uh, chair of Virgin Unite, Stacey Warren, CEO of Algorand, and also a couple celebrities, Owen Wilson and Woody Harrelson. And so we did a poker tournament for our monkey, our on-chain monkey holders, with Charlie Lee, Owen Wilson, and Woody Harrelson, and 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 it was awesome. It was super fun um, to kind of entice them to come play poker with us. We said, hey, we'll give you your uh, monkeys, your karma monkeys, which is coming in June in advance, and so. For uh, Woody Harrelson, um, we did kind of a Cheers shirt. So that's actually one of our traits in the collection based off of Cheers. Um, and then for Owen Wilson, we did a Zoolander outfit uh, that's coming in Karma. And so, and, you know, we are going to do a reveal tonight, hopefully, with uh, Sir Richard Branson, who should be here. For uh, They're celebrating uh, direct flights from London to Austin. And so we have a we have his Genesis and his Karma Monkey that we'll be revealing to him that we kind of check through his family also have traits that we think he will appreciate. That's awesome. And and um, Mark, what, what kind of thinking have you put into sort of integrating the community and the utility and the attributes specifically and tying that in with, with the art and the economics of the collection with, you know, from a rarity perspective? Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So it was funny, Jerry, when you said surprise and delight, because it's something that when the team, we, you know, we're together 24-7. And um, so one of the things that we just started doing is our surprise and delight campaign post-mint, um, looking at some of the assets. So one of them is wearing a Stealing Oceans hoodie. One of them is wearing a Get Main Lobster hoodie. So... The one we just announced, Utility, if you have a Get Main Lobster, which is a very rare hoodie on a Hattie, hoodie on a Hattie, say that three times fast. Hoodie um, on a Hattie, hoodie on a Hattie, <laughs> hoodie on a Hattie. You got it. <laughs> I'll airdrop you later. Um, so they're going to get 50% of the profits on a special Hattie box that will sell on our Web2 business. And then we'll pay that out quarterly. And uh, Stealing Oceans, they get to vibe with Brian, who's a music artist, and potentially be in a music video or come to a and concert. Did you integrate that with the art? Did Abs you, yeah, yeah. We, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Alex, what, are, what about you, man? Um, as, you're, as you're starting to refine the tokenomics of different NFTs, and you guys have different levels of, of rarity, um, how does that influence the art? Uh, we all love the golden fur of specific uh, board apes, right? But that can get old, right? Like, like you can't keep doing gold and diamond and different colors to represent rarity. You, you want to mix it up. People get bored. They want those surprises. So how do you think about that as an artist and uh, a collaborator with these different collections? Yeah, it's an interesting question because, as you said, we have tiers at one of. You know, we go from kind of like this green or gold, which is very accessible, low priced, up to the platinum diamond, which is the more scarce, higher priced NFTs. We usually have one visual artist making the art across all of the tiers. So it's always a conversation at the beginning where I'm like, I know you love all of your art, but is there a world where you would see one of your pieces being the accessible kind of low cost one, and then a couple being like the really special kind of um, more scarce ones. Um, it's complicated because, you know, an artist will kind of appreciate all of their different pieces they deliver. Um, one way to approach it sometimes is kind of like different uh, mediums. So it might be like a still from the overall animation that we mint is like the green or gold tier lower priced NFT. And then we might use like the full animation um, as the as the top tier NFT, so you have access to the whole thing. Or in music, it might be you know a, a snippet of a track, and then we'll give you like the extended you know extended cut for for the highest tier one. Um, stylistically, I mean, we try to still make them all dope, though. You know, like every tier should have be artistically compelling. Every tier should have like something to offer and a narrative behind it. Yeah, you don't want to feel shortchanged if you don't decide to get as rare of one or if they're all equal, for example, for other collections. If you happen to get one that's not as rare, if it has like a feeling or energy to it, then you're more likely to enjoy it, right? Some people dig the lower tier ones because they just it resonates with them and that's, you know, a, a victory because that's when people are actually connecting with the artwork, you know. So one trend I've seen, um, you know, from the show and some of the projects we've had on is a little bit of randomness around the rarity and rarities that you don't actually know 
what's going to happen next, secret rarities, things like that. Do you guys all think about that? I'm just kind of curious how, how that sort of influences things. Like it could be like maybe an earring on an NFT that, you know, looks completely normal, but has superpowers, right? Any thoughts there? Um, we didn't really plan it. But, you know, if you look in rarity tools, it's not fully correct. But there are some like little idiosyncrasies that our community loves. Uh, Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, is an uh, investor and he has gone deep and bought a lot of on chain monkey. And he happens to love the naked monkeys, which are literally no clothes. You can see nipples. I just said that in a panel uh, on open. And, and those, like, for some reason, even though they're not the rarest, People love the ones with no clothes. So that's one. Another one just happened to be that uh, Danny Yang and I think Bill both have clothes 26, which is a certain color clothing with a color pocket. And that has now become like the company uniform. And so people are like, really love clothes 26, even though that's not the rarest trait. So there are, we didn't plan it, but there are definitely kind of quirky, fun, cultural things that have come across uh, over time. I think if you were launching that collection, Austin, everyone would go for the ones without clothes, <laughs> for sure. Um, but that's great. And I think that's an important point is, um, you know, create the opportunity, again, for, for magic and serendipity and mystery and intrigue. Um, this has been really interesting. I've learned a lot. I'd love to sort of pass it around one last time. For any closing thoughts on style and also... Um, how folks can kind of learn more about what you're doing in the space and, and track you. Let's kick it off with Mark. Um, <clears throat> kind of piggybacking on what you said, because the art generation process was super interesting. And then to see the mints come in and see the community's excitement about their combination or lack of combination and um, having eight assets and 7,777 is, it's kind of a neat process. So, we're just as much a part of like being a having a holder's feeling uh, as they are, which is it's kind of a cool as a founder. Uh, I really appreciate that feeling. Awesome. And Mark, how can people keep track of, of Hattie's and, and what you're up to in the space? So Twitter at Hattie's Bay Club, H-A-D-D-I-E-S Bay Club. And uh, we're on Telegram, Discord, you know, Instagram, all that jazz. Awesome. Um, I'd say it's a great time to come into OnChain Monkey now. Um, so you can still buy the Genesis collection. You can buy our OCM desserts. What will happen is on June 29th, your Genesis monkey will eat a dessert, kind of like the mutant serums, and then get dropped a Karma monkey. That We will also have a 10,000 public mint for uh, Karma monkeys, but that you know could be hard to get those. So it's great to come in for Genesis now. Otherwise, our Karma mint on the 29th, uh, I would say in terms of following us, we are a, like Discord, Twitter fanatics. So on chain at on chain monkey. Uh, and then that's on Twitter, Discord, um, or come talk to me. Uh, I'd love to, to talk to you guys more. Um, just keep supporting artists. You know, like this space has changed the lives of so many artists, digital artists early on and soon to be musicians um at, at one of and other platforms so just like keep supporting people in the arts um by their nfts there's so many exciting things happening with the tech in terms of utility and applications and that's amazing but i think there's still always going to be a place where it's uh, art on the blockchain and that's what i'm passionate about so yeah just keep uh, supporting that yeah just on that point um before we close we had a really cool interview the other day with uh tatiana demaria who's um, you know, a prolific artist, songwriter in the space. And, you know, you often think about um, how complicated uh, it can be to produce music and manage yourself as an artist. And then you add the blockchain side on it and you realize that, you know, it could be very overwhelming for artists to get into the space and to figure it out. And, and creators want to create. Right. So the more we can support them doing what they do and surround them with people that want to enjoy the other stuff or are good at the other stuff and won't take advantage of them, will embrace them as artists and give them the full value of their work, the more we can evolve this this amazing space. So I just want to share that and let's close it down, Jer. How's it going? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he pretty much said it already. Uh, we're thrilled to be working with so many artists. 
Uh, personally, from like a reward standpoint, I've been doing rewards for almost a decade, and I am super excited just in general uh, to see what Web3 is going to bring to the rewards industry, traditional like banks, airlines, like all, all this kind of stuff that we've got going on. And I, I think what we're releasing with the One Pass or are about to release with the One Pass uh, is kind of this grand experiment to see like what we can do if we underprice something and then throw as many benefits as, as possible at it. Like we've got these partnerships with the Grammys and Doja Cat and Biggie Smalls and uh, super cool things with Art Basel and South by and, and all these uh, really interesting events and celebrities and artist access uh, and just really overwhelm users with, with what that is and then just kind of let it go and, and see what happens when it, it is allowed to grow on its own back and forth with uh, the brand and the community. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, especially in the current market, over deliver value and, 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 and plan for the long term and, um, you know, uh, support the artist. So thank you all for being on this panel. Thank you guys for listening. And I'm um, definitely going to check out everything everyone's up to. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.